Hi, I'm Merlin Tuttle, and in this program, I'm going to highlight the extraordinary importance of bats. Prior to the arrival of humans, bats were among the world's most successful mammals. Often, they filled our night skies in numbers that rivaled those of the now extinct passenger pigeon, and they evolved to play extraordinarily important roles. Today, their decline threatens the balance of nature and the health of whole ecosystems and human economies. In more than 50 years of studying bats, I've often been surprised by their values and shocked at the extent of their losses. Millions at a time have been killed out of needless fear by people who simply fail to understand their values. It's my opinion that the few great colonies that remain should be granted the same protection we provide to endangered species, and it's in our best interest to protect all bats. Here's why. Unseen by human eyes, bats play key roles in controlling insect pests, pollinating flowers, carrying seeds needed to replant damaged forests, and much more. These are just a few of the 10 to 20 million bats that live in Bracken Cave in Central Texas. This one colony can consume more than 100 tons of insects in a single night. Just to give you an idea of how much one of these bats can be worth, each spring literally billions of corn earworm, army worm, and other moss pests that cost American farmers billions of dollars a summer migrate from Mexico into the United States. In a single night, just one of these free tail bats can fly thousands of feet above ground, intercept egg-laden moths, and eat enough of them to prevent them from laying 20,000 or more eggs. That's enough to force a Texas farmer to spray multiple acres with pesticides at cost of $74 per acre. In the Mediterranean, it was recently discovered that just by putting up a few small bat houses strategically located around a 12 hectare plot of rice, they were able to protect farmers sufficiently to end the need for pesticides. And in South Africa, it was recently discovered that bats are primary predators of green stink bugs, the most costly pest of macadamia orchards in South Africa. Some bats prefer to catch their prey from the ground. For example, this one feeds primarily on grasshoppers, katydids, and crickets it catches from the ground. And others even glean caterpillars from foliage. Now that we've seen the importance of insect eating bats, let's have a look at those that eat fruit and nectar beginning in the deserts of North and South America. In arid areas all the way from the southwestern U.S. down to northern Chile, there are dozens of species of giant cacti that rely almost entirely on bats for their pollination and often for seed dispersal as well. This one is found only in one valley in one country in the entire world, and so far as we know, it depends entirely on bats for its pollination. Bats carry more pollen farther than any other pollinator, up to 60 miles or more in a single evening. These same bats are also essential seed dispersers. This one is taking the fruit of a Cardone cactus, the largest cactus in the world. It grows over 50 feet tall. This one is taking the fruit of the famous saguaro cactus. Also in these arid areas of the New World, there are hundreds of species of agaves, most of which are believed to rely on bats as their primary pollinators. This one is worth billions of dollars annually to the Mexican economy in tequila and mezcal production. Without bats, all that economic value could be lost. Amazingly, bats can have important impacts even high above timberline in the Andean Paramo. Up here, it's too cold for bats to rear young, so they have to live far down in the warm valleys. This plant, however, is really dependent on pollination. It takes a hundred years for one to mature and set flowers, and those flowers act last for only a season. Then it dies. How does it get pollinated? 
these bats ride thermals up to those high elevations just like we ride escalators in a shopping center. Worldwide, bats are especially important in tropical forests. In this neotropical rainforest, we might find a hundred or more species of bats just in one small area, and each is contributing its own specialty, some preventing overpopulation of insects, others pollinating flowers or dispersing seeds. This one little Corolia bat can carry 60,000 seeds to new locations in a single night. And if only 1% or fewer of those seeds survive to become seedlings, this bat can still account for many thousands of new seedlings in a single year. There are countless other bats in the rainforest, each carrying different kinds of seeds, and their total impact is incredible. In the other side of the world, tiny fruit bats contribute up to 95% of the first seeds dropped in abandoned clearings in Africa. And they have an enormous impact in first regeneration of the pioneer plants required to achieve reforestation. Back in Latin America, in the tip top of the rainforest, we have tank plants. We hardly see them from ground level, but they're critically important. They're called tank plants because each one traps large quantities of rainwater essential to the reproduction of everything from insects to frogs and serving as drinking fountains essentially for monkeys, toucans, parrots, all kinds of animals. And we already know that more than 20 species of these tank plants rely on bats as their primary pollinators. Believe it or not, bats even contribute to the production of seafood. Mangroves on Asian and Indian Ocean islands are ecologically essential, serving as nurseries for a wide variety of fish and crustaceans of great value to humans and their bat pollinated. Back to Africa, the most famous plant of East African savannas is the giant baobab, and it too relies on bats as its primary pollinators. Its fruit is the one of the richest sources of vitamins known and sells for about a billion dollars a year. As you'll see, many bat dependent plants, in addition to their extraordinary ecological importance, are also of great value to human economies. This spectacled bat in Australia is pollinating a black bean tree, one of the most prized timber trees. And this Jamaican fruit eating bat in Panama is obviously doing a great job of pollinating a balsa flower. It's hard to conceive of a fruit more important to humans than the banana. All commercial bananas come from ancestral species in Southeast Asia that are heavily reliant on bats as their primary or exclusive pollinators. Were we to lose these ancestral banana species, we could lose the genetic material required to save future crops from disease. In Southeast Asia, no fruit is more important than the durian. It sells for billions of dollars a year. It's considered to be the king of fruit, and each durian flower has to be pollinated by a bat to set fruit. As those flowers are pollinated, they drop their non-essential parts, helping signal next arriving bats that they've already been pollinated go to the next flower. When farmers see the petals falling to the ground, they misunderstand and want to have the bats killed. This illustrates the need for education. My experience in gaining protection for the now famous Khao Chong Prawn Bat Cave illustrates the incredible value of restoring even a single great bat colony. In 1981, I convinced the monks who owned the cave that they could greatly increase income from guano fertilizer sales by hiring a game warden to protect their bats. As a direct result, the colony grew rapidly and sales went from 12,000 US dollars annually to more than 130,000. Also, 
the emergences became so spectacular they attracted both scientists and tourists and the scientists discovered that these baths were worth some 300,000 US dollars annually in protecting local rice growers from white billy plant hopper damage. The locals also were quick to take advantage of the thousands of tourists who began to arrive and I would estimate today that this one colony of bats is probably worth at least a million dollars a year to just one local community in Thailand. This isn't an isolated case. Worldwide, where large numbers of bats have been protected, they've proven to be extremely valuable. In Austin, Texas, when hundreds of thousands of bats began moving into a downtown bridge, people panicked, thought they were rabid and going to attack them, wanted them eradicated. But as soon as they learned the value of bats, they were happy to protect them. And today, decades later, not a single person has ever been harmed by one of those bats. And we now know that they're catching tons of crop and yard pests each night and bringing tens of millions of tourist dollars to Austin each summer. As you've just seen, bats are indeed essential to ecosystems and economies worldwide, so much so that we simply can't afford to ignore their needs. Helping bats helps people and can be as easy as putting up a bat house, protecting a cave, or sharing our knowledge with a neighbor. The rewards for people can be enormous.